Yeah, he's a nice fish. 15. That's actually a decent fish. The 15 and 15 and a half. Oh, a little bigger. <laughs> yep. Yeah, all right. 16 and a half or better, maybe. Most would say that's a 17. Ooh, nice fish. Oh, got him! Oh! <laughs> Long swirl before he hit. Wow, look at that. That is a nice fish. Oh no, don't go get... Oh, he's caught in the tree. He's going to jump over this stick right here. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Smallmouth bass or just smallmouth, or smallies to most of us. It's hard to find a better game fish or a better type of fishing. And for many of the smallies fans, the absolute ultimate is catching this magnificent species in moving water in the thousands of rivers and streams where smallmouth swim. How about you? Smallmouth bass's complex life cycle still isn't fully understood we do know that besides reproduction, the species' other prime directive, of course, is eating. And like their big mouth cousins, smallmouths have been known to eat critters as diverse and as unusual as mice, small snakes, frogs, even baby turtles. But the overwhelming majority of their diet is more mundane, crayfish and minnows. In most rivers, crayfish are their predominant food source during the mid and late summer growth periods when these crustaceans are the most abundant and available. Of course, rivers are very dynamic with numerous physical features, and being able to easily identify many of these features is necessary for anyone wanting to become a good stream angler. The most important river components are riffles, runs, and pools. Riffles are the primary food producing areas in a stream. They're shallow, rocky, and fast flowing. And riffles are where large numbers of aquatic insects are produced. Smaller fish may use riffles during midday, but larger smallies generally only move into riffles during low light. Runs are sort of in between riffles and pools. They're deeper than riffles and faster flowing than pools. Runs over two feet deep can hold plenty of actively feeding fish, especially if they have current obstructions like boulders. Pools are prime fish holding locations in most streams. Pools are the deepest and most slow flowing areas and provide both resting and Smallmouth topwatering isn't just exciting and oh so enjoyable, it's also extremely productive. If you present it right, you can make your surface lure seem like an odd yet appealing critter, something that's struggling and easy to capture. And this is why topwaters are so attractive to the opportunistic and curious smallmouth. Best of all, because smallmouth streams are mostly shallow, river smallies are especially susceptible to surface fishing. Over the years, I and my guiding clients have caught thousands of hefty bronze backs off the top. And so can you. In fact, whenever water temperatures are above 58 degrees and there's moderate water clarity, smallmouths become caught on topwaters.